Solution dilution. What happens to the concentration of a solution if more solvent is added? Well, think about, again, the, the example I used a couple of videos ago. You go to the fast food restaurant. You get a pop. They fill your cup with ice. And then that ice melts, adding liquid water to your drink. And all of a sudden, you don't have a nice, sweet drink anymore. Now you have a just a mess that's not really sweet at all. It's just it's it's diluted down to nothing. It's terrible. Dilution is what happens when you add more solvent to a mixture. You dilute down the solvent uh, the solute materials to they're not as concentrated and they're not. <coughs> Uh, in the case of chemistry, in the case of chemical reactions, um, you're not going to have as large of a concentration, so your reactions are generally going to um, either be slower because there's not as much stuff there, or you're not going to have as much of the reaction occurring. Um, and sometimes you actually want that. Um, and actually, usually, when you perform a dilution, you're not doing it just for funsies. You're doing it because you actually want to dilute the, uh, the material down because maybe it was too concentrated to start off with. So if you're doing that, if you're going to take a concentrated solution and dilute it down to a lower concentration, we need some way of quantifying how to do that. So we need some equation to help us figure out um, how much to dilute, essentially, how to do those, how to perform those dilutions. And this is the equation we're going to use to do that. C1V1 is equal to C2V2. C here stands for concentration, and V stands for the volume. And so the, uh, even though you don't have to technically do it this way, I always try to, to have the C1 and V1 stand for the concentrated, and then the 2's be the diluted. Now, technically speaking, it'll work either way. Like you could you could flip those, um, and it would still work. But just in for my own sake, keeping things straight, I always try to put the one as the concentrated and two as the diluted. Now, notice here, I said concentration and I said volume. I didn't specify a unit for either one, and the reason is that you don't have to. As long as the two volume units are the same, and as long as the two concentration units are the same, it can be any unit you want. Now, most of the time, it's going to be uh, molarity <coughs> for the concentration, and most of the time for the volume, it's either liters or milliliters. But it doesn't have to be. It could be any unit, um, as long as they are the same. So if you have uh, a volume in liters, as your starting stuff, then V2 is also going to be in liters. It has to be. So as long as they're the same, it's fine. You don't have to specify uh, what the concentration unit is or what the volume unit is, as long as they are the same. You're not restricted to one or the other. So with that in mind, uh, let's see. Okay, so I don't, I didn't give myself space to do that here. So we'll work this out right here. What is the concentration of a two liter solution of 0.55 molar HCl that is diluted to a final volume of five and a half liters? So, remembering our equation here, the two liters would be our V1, 0.55 molar, would be our C1, and the five and a half liters is our V2. So it went from being two liters, and we added three and a half more liters of water. We diluted it down to five and a half liters. So what we're trying to find here is that final concentration. We're trying to find C2. What is the concentration after we've diluted it? And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and do the algebra first. So if I'm trying to find C2, what I can do is divide both sides of this equation by V2, 
and that will give me C2 is equal to C1 V1 over uh, V2 and that will allow me to solve for that final concentration. So if I go ahead and plug in what I know, C1, 0.55 molar, V1, 2 liters, V2, 5.5 liters. So notice here that the liters cancel out. And if I do the math, let's see, 0.55 times 2 divided by 5.5. I will have 0.2, ah, ran out of space there. 0.2 uh, molar is the concentration. Now we can do a little bit of a sanity check here because we're diluting it. The molarity should go down, and it does indeed go down. Uh, if you are diluting something and somehow the concentration increases, you did something wrong. Um, so it's not really possible just to tell and look that the the proportion is correct. You can kind of get an idea, uh, but you can for sure tell that at least you're going the right direction. The molarity did decrease. Okay, um, why don't you give this next one here a shot? on your own. So uh, you can pause the video here in just a second to try and work this out. Um, so this particular question says, how would you prepare a five liter, uh, how would you prepare five liters of a one and a half molar KCL solution given a 12 molar stock solution? So try to work out what your one and two values are and see if you can solve for the unknown. Okay, so hopefully you paused that and gave it a shot. If you look here, we're asked to prepare this solution. So this is actually our two values. This is our final uh, product that we're trying to make as a result of the dilution. This would be our starting concentration. We have 12 molar. A stock solution, by the way, this is a solution that um, like if you were a company and you used uh, materials for uh, producing things, or even if you were just you know working in the chemistry lab at TCC, you would order stock solutions that are very highly concentrated because you know you can get that stock solution, this solution that you hold in stock, and you can dilute it down to make solutions that are lower in concentration. It just makes a lot more sense to get you know three liters of 12 molar HCl um, makes a whole lot more sense to do that than to get 100 liters of 1 tenth molar HCl. Uh, and just logistically and also in terms of safety, it's kind of counterintuitive, but it is actually slightly it's safer to have just a small volume of stock stuff to worry about versus having you know, liters upon liters upon liters of uh, the uh, lower concentration stuff. So anyway, we're trying to find uh, V1, essentially. We're trying to figure out how much of this stock solution would we need to dilute down to 5 liters. So if we're trying to find V1, kind of the same thing as before, we can do the algebra here at the beginning. V1 is going to be C2 times V2 over C1. Uh, and so if I plug in what I know, C2, 1.5 molar, V2, 5 liters, C1, 12 molar. So my molarities here cancel out, and I am left with... zero point six two five liters. So to answer the question here, to prepare that solution, I would take six hundred and twenty five milliliters or point six two five liters, it's the same thing, of the stock solution and dilute it with water 
until it had a volume of 5 liters. That's how you'd prepare it. So that would look something like this when you were doing that. Um, you would take the more concentrated solution, figure out how much of that you would need, put it into some other container, and then just add water to the mark. So in this case, it's not quite as big of a sample here. In the example we saw back here, it was 5 liters. That is obviously not 5 liters. Uh, I think that's, again, 250. Um, but the, the principle is still the same. Figure out how much of the concentrated stuff you need, get that amount, and then just add water to it until you're at the correct volume. All right, let's do a couple more uh, examples here. So, what is the molarity of a solution made from a 2 mil aliquot of 12 molar phosphoric acid solution diluted to a final volume of 500 mils? So this is very similar to what we just did. The only difference here is we have this weird word aliquot, which I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing correctly. Um, and that's just kind of a sciencey way of saying a bit. Like it's it's a portion, it's a it's a section of the the total. So uh, you're taking a a pouring out a small portion of the whole. So go ahead and pause the video and try to work this one out on your own as well. All right. So we're told here that we're trying to find the molarity of a solution that's made from a dilution. So we're trying to find C2. We're told that it was made with 2 mils of a 12 molar solution and that we've uh, <coughs> diluted it down to 500 mils. So our starting stuff, our more concentrated stuff, is our V1. Uh, oh, why did I write C2 there? Sorry about that. That is C1. So this is our C1 and V1. 500 mils is our final uh, volume. And so just like before, we can do a little bit of algebra here. We're trying to find C2. So that is going to be C1 times V1 over V2. So if I plug in what I know, 12 molar is V1, 2 mils is uh, sorry, 12 molar is C1. 2 mils is V1, and V2 is 500 mils. So notice here the milliliters cancel out. Again, it's not the same as the previous one. We had liters before. Now we have mils. As long as there's the same unit, that's perfectly fine. And so if I do that math, that is going to be 0 0.048 molar. Last example here. If we wish to mix 500 mils of 0.65 sodium acetate solution, how many mils should we acquire from an 8.5 molar stock solution. So if we're trying to make this, so this would be our final result, V2 and uh, oops, C2, and we're starting with this. So this is our C1. How much of that stuff do we have to use? So that would be our V1. So we are trying to find V1. Given what we know, 0.655 molar is our C2. V2 is 500 mils. And C1 is 8.5 molar. So again here, our molarity cancels out, and we are left with 
38.5 mils to make that solution. So we would take that 8.5 molar stock, collect 38.5 of it, and dilute it down to 500 mils. And that would give us the concentration that we wanted. All right, we'll call it there for this video. The next one will be our last video for this chapter. We will briefly talk about a few other concentration units, uh, where they come from and where they are useful. So I'll see you in the next and last video for chapter three.